was World War II, they thought, well, everybody has, has had an exceptional time and many people have given so much more than us. You know, obviously many people gave their lives. Nicholas Winton, obviously, he never sought any acknowledgement really for what he'd done until that story broke on, on That's Life. What a great movie uh, with a lot of heart. And the story is incredible. Did you know anything about the story before you um, took on the project? Yes, a little bit. You'd be hard to find somebody in the in the UK who who had never heard the name or uh, Sir Nicholas Winton because that's life was like a massive deal in the UK. Like when I was growing up, it was like, you know, one of our biggest shows and it was, you know, quite an extraordinary show. You don't really have that. It was a real sort of variety kind of with chat, you know, chat show, but also it was a, a weird mix. And then it would be like, oh, and now somebody's coming on because their porpoise can sing. You know, it's it was that kind of show. But um, he, Nicholas Winton obviously didn't, um, you know, he he never sought any acknowledgement really for what he'd done until really and that that sh uh, story broke on on that's life so i'd heard of it but i wasn't really familiar with it so uh, then i love that you know it's getting the story's getting out there for other people to to hear and especially younger audiences right because um it's such a great thing like showing the sacrifice he made for you know, the weakest. And so, um, and your character as well was working on towards that. Could you talk about kind of that theme of like sacrificing for the weakest and the, and the most in need? Yeah, I think Nick, people like Nicholas Winton and Doreen Warriner, like they understood instinctively what was going to happen in Europe in the way that like the leaders of Britain and the other European countries and many, many people who were knowledgeable about politics just didn't really understand. You know, they really had a feeling that people were in existential danger. Doreen Warriner was already working in Czechoslovakia, running this tiny refugee agency trying, but you know, the numbers of people coming in from Germany was like doubling every day. So it was that, you know, they were very quickly kind of swamped with, you know, Jewish people, uh, political exiles, um, common people who were communists, you know, they, it was just becoming more and more people, it was becoming unmanageable. And they also understood that there was going to become a point quite soon where those people, but, but the, the Jewish people's particularly lives were going to be, you know, under extreme existential threat. And, and they just gave up everything that they could they dropped their lives in order to 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 do this and i think you know the title of the film the message of the film is really that you know you can <laughs> you can you know you can follow your instincts you can do not you know what you are being told to do but you can just you know trust yourself and trust your fellow man to do the right thing in an extraordinarily difficult situation and you know people like that their message is so important because I think it is really easy to spend your days, especially nowadays, only hearing about bad people. You know, we only never hear about people who've failed and let us down as a species, you know, and these are people who are, you know, who really um, are, are people to be proud of. I love that. Yeah, totally. I mean, the news is saturated with all the the shock value and it's wonderful to have something that's inspiring us to do something better than ourselves. But um, there's a line also that that the group says that it says the army of the ordinary. That's just like that concept. But could you talk about the army of the ordinary? Yeah, I mean, so Doreen Warriner was an economist, so she was like very educated, you know, and, and exceptional in that sense. But she was a civilian. She was just a member of the public. And, you know, she had some languages, but, you know, she wasn't you, she, she didn't work for a big NGO. She hadn't been sent there by a government. You know, Trevor Chadwick and Nicholas Winton you know, they, they both worked in sort of office jobs, you know, and um, the people that they collaborated with in Prague were very much just members of the public. You know, people had different jobs, but they they were a team of people who saw something better and understood something better than people in the know and and refused to accept the, they, they just refused to accept the situation for what it was. You know, everybody, any sort of right thinking person would have said, well, we know that all the European countries won't take any refugees, you know, because of the economic crisis. We just know that as a fact. And they just weren't prepared to accept that as a fact. And I think, you know, they were or, or they genuinely were ordinary people, but, you know, with a capacity for 
instinct and also for strength of character that was maybe exceptional. Totally. It sounds like you do, uh, you know, a lot of research on the people and the behind the scenes of, you know, their real lives. Um, is that how you like to operate whenever you do a role? Like you really like to get into to who they were and, and how they inspire you personally? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, like, that's the great privilege of my job, you know, is that like, I would never turn down any opportunity to like, you know, do more reading or, you know, have more information because, you know, I love history anyway, but like, the, this, it's a, it's an, it's a privilege to learn about these people, to meet their families, to have access to, you know, letters or diaries that aren't published. Um, but luckily, the film uh, production company had been working very closely with uh, Sir Nicholas Winton's family. So they or they, you know, there was a when I came onto the project, there was a, a big draft of resources that we could access. Um, and then, you know, obviously, I did my own reading on on top of that. And, and yeah, it was a, it was a great it was a great privilege to get to do that work. Oh, I know when you're you're in the midst of it, you know, you're it's the production of it, but were there any moments that you really kind of got emotional doing or maybe looking back or watching the film um, because the story is so beautiful? Yeah, it was a very emotional experience. The whole thing was, um, you know, I'm quite a cynical person. I would say my taste le like leans towards, you know, art that makes like, you know, is quite... Um, uh, like uh, unsympathetic towards human beings, but that but it just it constantly forced me to you know rid myself of that cynicism. This film, um, it might be in the materials, but we shot the scenes where the children are evacuated from Prague on the main train station in Prague on the platform where they were evacuated um, and they didn't shut the train station when we were filming it the other platforms were all open um, and there was just people getting off trains school children going off to school people leaving for work and coming back from work and just kind of seeing this moment in history getting reenacted it was it was incredibly powerful for everybody involved i think um you know to say nothing of the fact that we had hundreds of little children you know playing all of these um these kids and it was very it was very moving and then when i came to see the film i watched it in a screening room you know on, on my own like in the middle of the day it was like 11 o'clock in the morning and i was just like absolutely like i couldn't do anything else that day i was absolutely uh destroyed by it and you know and i'd seen the film and read the script and you know and i think it yeah it is a very profoundly moving experience watching the film i love that you and and you talked about it a little bit but his um Nicholas is kind of selfless, uh, selfless, like humble, like he didn't want all the recognition. And it was, you know, the team did facilitate. Right. Um, but can you talk about kind of that, how all everybody who participated, it had to be like a selfless act for them? I think they just genuinely didn't think of themselves as exceptional. They thought, you know, it was World War Two. They thought, well, everybody has has had an exceptional time and many people have given so much more than us. You know, obviously many people gave their lives, you know. So they didn't think that they'd done anything extraordinary. And, you know, I think it's easy nowadays to th to think oh we have all of these things that are, are advantages you know we can constantly kind of show other people what we've done but actually that can become like a sort of noose around your neck and actually it's a wonderful thing I think to have had what they had which was the sense that they could do extraordinary things and then that was just who they were and they didn't need to kind of turn it into like you know um show off yeah they show didn't it need off. to do that you know they were they were very comfortable with who they were I mean Doreen never spoke of but she went back to working at university after the war she never spoke about what she did and she didn't yeah she apparently just didn't really think it was anything out of the ordinary and I in a way I kind of see that as a privilege of their times as well as obviously a testament to what modest people that they were can I ask is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.